Once I started playing Forager, I couldn't stop until I'd blasted through pretty much the whole game. I was constantly gaining upgrades, constantly unlocking new mechanics, and it always felt like I needed to complete just one more task. So in this video, I'll be breaking down how the game maintains this sense of constant progression. Let's jump in. There are four pillars of progression in Forager. Mining, leveling, crafting, and expanding. Let's quickly take a look at each of them. Mining is the game's primary mechanic. The world starts out small and empty, but then it gradually fills up with resources like trees, rocks, and animals. You can mine all of these resources to gain a variety of items, which means that the player is always progressing just by clicking on things. Along the top of the screen is a big experience bar that fills up whenever you do pretty much anything. Each level you unlock a new skill, and these skills add entirely new mechanics to the game. This acts kind of like an extended tutorial, drip feeding you new abilities in a way that won't overwhelm new players. As you unlock more skills, you can start placing down buildings, and these buildings then craft your items into power-ups for your character, increasing your movement speed, your attack speed, your damage, and your resource gain rates. You can also craft coins or sell your items in the market, and this earns you money. With the money you've earned from your buildings, you can then unlock more rooms to explore. This forms the progression capstone, because many of these rooms contain big set pieces of content that are memorable and that feel satisfying to clear. By themselves, most of these progression pillars would run out of steam pretty quickly. I do enjoy playing clicker heroes, but there's really only so many times I can click to make a number go up before I want to do something else. But Forager manages to stay consistently engaging because these progression pillars link into each other and form loops. Mining gives you experience, helping you level up. It also provides the resources you need to craft power-ups, and sometimes you'll also find rare items like gems that help you earn the money needed to buy rooms. Leveling up unlocks new mechanics that help you mine faster, or that increase your crafting options, or that earn you more money for expansion. Crafting gives you upgraded gear to let you mine things much faster. It can also gain you experience, and you can sell the crafted items for extra money. Finally, by expanding the map, you'll end up with more space, which means more resources to mine, more space for your crafting buildings, and much more experience. And so, progressing in any one of the four pillars can, directly and indirectly, progress you in each of the others. You might start off mining an area, then level up and choose a skill that makes your items sell for more. You might then sell all your gems, and use that money to buy a new area to mine in, bringing you full circle. These kinds of loops naturally emerge out of the game because each progression pillar is interwoven with the others. Games have tried out all sorts of different upgrade systems over the years. Trees, wheels, shops, and everything in between. But sometimes the simplest solutions really are the best. In Forager, you have 64 potential upgrades arranged in an 8x8 grid. Each quarter of the grid represents a different skill tree – foraging, building, magic, and combat. At the start, you can only pick the central four skills. But each time you gain a skill, you can then also see its neighbours. And in this way, you gradually move from the centre of the grid out towards the edges. The genius of this system is that it gently guides the player while still leaving lots of space for choice. The most important upgrades are clustered in the centre. You can assume that everybody will unlock these pretty quickly. The outer upgrades tend to be less impactful, but this means that the player is genuinely free to prioritise the ones that suit their playstyle. You can tell that the developer really liked this system because it actually appears twice in the game. You start your playthrough in the world's centermost room. Then, as you earn more money, you can expand outwards towards the edges, and the outermost rooms cost more money. This land grid is 7x7 rather than 8x8, but the same principles are at work here too. Each room spawns resources at a constant rate. 
This means that as the world expands, the player needs to harvest things much faster if they want to visit every room before all of the resources respawn. Because of this, most of your character's gear boils down to increasing your mining speed one way or another. Your gloves, your pickaxe and your sword increase your mining speed directly. Your boots let you move around the world faster. And your amulet increases the number of resources that you get from mining. Now, since the world increases in size as your player increases in speed, the duration of a complete harvesting run actually stays about the same, roughly five minutes. But since you're covering a much larger area in those five minutes, you'll end up with many more resources. And this helps you progress in the other three pillars. And perhaps more importantly, it just feels awesome to run through an area and obliterate everything in seconds. So. What can we learn? Forager takes influences from a lot of different games, which makes it hard to box into a single genre. The mining and the crafting feel a lot like Minecraft. Obviously. Whereas leveling up makes me think of idle games like Clicker Heroes. The skills grid distills the best part of RPGs, and the world itself gives off some strong Zelda vibes, complete with wise old men and puzzle dungeons. And in the end, it's this variety that makes Forager so compelling. You're constantly shifting between goals, improving one thing before improving another. And all of this is underpinned by the tried and tested loop of clicking on everything you see. So. My top three game design takeaways from playing Forager are Number one, each progression goal should help you achieve the other goals. Many of Forager's progression goals wouldn't be so interesting on their own. To level up, you can literally just run in circles and click on everything you come across. But because these goals link into each other, the player will often start on one goal before transitioning into another, and then another, and this variety keeps engagement high. Number two, grids can strike a balance between guiding the player and giving them choices. Placing the most important upgrades in the middle of your grid ensures all players will get them. The edges of your grid can then contain upgrades that are more niche or more suited to a particular playstyle. Number three, you can increase the player's speed and power to match the size of the world. Most of your character power-ups boil down to increasing your mining speed one way or another. The world also grows at roughly the same rate, keeping the overall pacing constant, but there's a visceral difference between playing like this and playing like this. As always, I could say a whole lot more about Forager, but this video is going to have to leave things here. I make a new design video every month, so subscribe if you want to see more of them. I'll also be back in two weeks to show you the recent development progress for Patch Quest, my monster riding, jungle crawling, action roguelike game. Stay tuned for that. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.